If I act a bit like a goofball for this episode, this is why. <laughs> Welcome back to the Skill Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode 14 of What's on the Bench Weekly. And if you are not familiar with this show or this format, it's where you get an insight into things that I'm building. What's on the bench this week? What's going on in Matt's life? Why is he so busy? All of these will be answered because this is what What's on the Bench is all about. And this is a pretty exciting episode. If you were watching the channel recently, you saw that HPI Racing has re-released the Baja 5B in kit form. This is this self-build kit. There are two different options. The Flux, which is what I have here, electric powered 8S capable, or the gasoline version. And gasoline is still very cool. And that's where I got my start with the Baja not too long ago with my good friend K-Pop RC. I will be sure to put links up here so you can check out all of the previous stuff that we've done with the Bajas. And now we've got more stuff to do with the Bajas and this is really super exciting. This is sort of a special episode uh, because I literally got home from Las Vegas on Saturday this kit was waiting for me when I got home. And of course I had to unpack and put everything back into the drawers in which they belong. And then we could get started on the build. And uh, this is a really spectacular build. Imagine it just like every other RC build kit that you've ever done, only so much bigger. <laughs> it's like, it's crazy. I had to go and dig for some uh, bigger hex bits because the standard ones aren't big enough. Uh, it does use a lot of 4 mil hex hardware, uh, which um, is larger. And in fact, the gyro uh, driver got a pretty good workout. In fact, I had to go to max torque to get most of these bolts torqued down. Uh, this is a phenomenal build though. I have to say that again. HPI has not changed anything. This is the exact same HPI Baja 5B that you could get when it was originally released all those years ago. And HPI was kind enough to share a lot of really cool memorabilia of the first set of actual RTRs that went out the door. Uh, so I have some of those photos that I'll uh, pepper in here somewhere. Uh, but this is because this is on what's on the bench. I actually built this in the last two days. It was a very involved build and there's a lot of stuff to do and a lot of stuff to cover. And it's not super easy for me to go through all of it, uh, but I will show bits and pieces of that build throughout this video to give you an idea of what goes into building a Baja 5B. There's a lot of steps, and um, this is a very spectacular buggy, and it's, it's sort of hard to uh, gauge the size of it with me just staring at it on the bench and you seeing my hands a little bit here and there. So uh, why don't I go grab another buggy, a two wheel drive, rear wheel drive buggy uh, of a similar style so you can get an idea of how big this really is. I'll go do that. There, that should give you a better idea. <laughs> what you see here is a Kyosho Ultima and this is a typical 10th scale buggy. Um, vintage of course, not of the same vintage as the HPI Baja, but close enough for jazz same basic layout rear motor uh this one's actually mid motor but uh we'll give it a pass for now uh but shock towers and the whole kind of even the same style of chassis the extruded aluminum chassis uh that's sort of a pan slash tub sort of all in one it's a it's a common layout and it works really well uh, and you can see why not much has changed over the years that's how big it is it's big seven inch plus tires. I, yeah, <laughs> it's sort of hard to uh, articulate my excitement, uh, but this was a really fun thing to put together and lots of challenging steps. And uh, without uh, dwelling too much on those steps, uh, there were a lot of things that I would consider gotchas. And because this is um, a re-re, but also, I don't remember if HPI actually released a kit um, for this this when it originally came out. There were some things in the manual, uh, lots of flipping from one section to another, 
because I was doing the electric version. If I was doing the gasoline version, probably much more straightforward. And there are a few mistakes that I made. One major mistake that I made, uh, there is a metal motor mount that is included uh, for the electric flux version that I forgot to install because there's a plastic one in there and it's obvious that it kind of, it's part of the assembly instructions no matter which version you're using. And I should have used my brain and just gone with the aluminum one, but I kind of forgot it was in the box, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but that was really the only thing that I mucked up. There's obviously a lot less control mechanisms because this is the electric version. You basically have an ESC, an electric motor, and a steering servo with a receiver. That's all you need. It's as standard as it gets. With the gasoline version, there is an additional servo to handle throttle and braking control. And of course you're not using that so it's a much simpler build in that regard so uh for you know the purposes of what hpi is doing i've gotten the electric kit k-pop has gotten the gas kit and then once we have them both built painted with a cool livery what we'll do is we'll get together and actually kind of compare the two of them in a th you know third video there was the unboxing yesterday there's this on the bench version today and then there will be another one where K-pop and I get together and discuss the merits of both gas and electric. I'm thinking nowadays with the technology the way it is, the electric one is going to be better. Maybe too hard to control, who knows. Uh, but speaking of electronics, Castle is going to be providing me with an XLX2, uh, which is their large format, large scale RC uh, ESC. Also an 800 kV brushless motor, which should be more than enough power for this buggy on 8S. Uh, and Reefs will also be supplying the steering servo. So uh, we're pretty much kitted out for electronics. I'll be using my DX5 Pro and a uh, Spectrum receiver. Other than that, there is not much to talk about. There is a lot that went into this build, and uh, I'm going to regale you with some uh, of those moments in this little build montage, so enjoy that. HPI includes this really cool tool to help set your pillow balls. It is virtually impossible to do it without ruining any of the parts without it, so I definitely recommend using it. Um, I don't recommend using a clamp like I tried to use here, I would much rather use a bench vise. It's much easier and a lot more effective, but a great tool nonetheless. They also include this great orange multi-tool, and this has a myriad of functions. Uh, one is to uh, use it with your rod ends. Uh, it'll come up in other steps later on as well, so definitely keep that around. Another tool that they include that I could not live without is this bearing setting device. And it's a pretty simple little device, but it does an incredible job of seating your bearings absolutely square in the plastic piece that you are putting them into. And without it, again, you're gonna get yourself into a lot of trouble. So I definitely recommend using it. It will save your fingers. So there's the whole front steering assembly done. Um, of course, I won't be adding any electronics yet, so we're skipping over those steps, but uh, now we move on to some of the more main chassis construction parts. Threadlock surprisingly doesn't get used very often in this build, uh, but this is one of the places where it does get used, and that's on the rear drive shafts. I'm gonna make sure those stay on, I guess.
The main diff is a complete work of art. Uh, lots of really nice, well put together pieces uh, to build uh, this nice center diff. It does include 5,000 weight uh, silicone diff oil, uh, and um, that sounds light for the size of the vehicle, but I will defer to their expertise. It's so funny to see the size of this transmission. Uh, the gears are absolutely massive and uh, require an awful lot of grease, which they do include. Uh, that grease also gets used on these ridiculously huge dog bones, uh, big enough for a real dog. You <laughs> and once you're installing those, I used a little pallet knife to apply the grease to them. Uh, to make it a lot easier to keep it where it was supposed to be and not be super messy. It's nice that they have these uh, shoes that uh, go over the dog bones, keeps everything nice and clean, keeps them free of debris and dirt, and keeps the grease where it's supposed to go. And there's the whole rear assembly all done. Here's the step where I made my only major mistake. I used the plastic uh, mount there rather than the aluminum one that's included with the flux bag. I uh, will obviously go back and repair that before I install the motor. And now it's time to assemble the two halves of the chassis. This is a pretty easy process, but uh, a very gratifying one. Shocks are a pain in any build, uh, but these were actually pretty easy. There's some really nice uh, instructions that kind of help cover some of the more complicated parts. Uh, don't forget that there is different oil for both the front and the rear shocks, so keep that in mind when you're doing your build. Bleeding shocks is really messy, but really important. And there's the massive shock all done. And uh, now for some very questionable hand movement. <laughs> One nice little touch there, a little guard for the bottom of the shock rod end. And now let's skip all the Lexan cutting. I'm really glad that HPI has brought the Baja back and it's so fitting that it all kind of happened when it did. I swear I didn't know they were doing this. So it's pretty cool that K-pop and I started to explore some of the fun and finicky parts of the Baja. And uh, it's just sort of kismet, I guess, that HPI decided to re-re it when they did. I'm really glad that they did though. And it's super exciting to have a fresh, brand new one that I built on the bench. Um, that to me, I think is probably the most important thing is that they offer a kit. Kits seem to be a bit of a dying breed in this industry, in this hobby. And it's not something that I'm happy to see go away. People need to know how to build things. Building is the best part. I have a t-shirt that says it, building is better. And I'm firm in that belief. When you know how it goes together and you know what goes into it, it's a much more enjoyable experience. So uh, with that said, this is basically it uh, in all of its glory. These massive shocks, tons of travel. Uh, it's just so awesome, and I'm so happy to have it. Uh, it is not light. It is a heavy, heavy buggy. Uh, but um, once we get electronics into there, it's gonna get a little bit heavier, and also the batteries as well. Speaking of, 
uh, for all those 8S batteries, there is a nice big battery tray underneath here. Um, not super easy to get at. You do have to take all the body panels off in order to get to those batteries. Speaking of the body, uh, we should talk about possible paint schemes. You do get a carbon fiber sticker sheet, and there are some HPI decals in there as well. But I'd like to do something custom to sort of commemorate the fact that this is a RiRi and an exclusive for the Scale Builders Guild and K-Pop RC. We're the first two people on the planet to get this RiRi. Uh, which is pretty amazing, and I'm very honored that HPI would choose someone like me <laughs> who's got zero experience with this part of the hobby <laughs> to give me one of these to play with. Uh, but I'm very appreciative of that. And um, if you've got a great idea for a good livery to sort of celebrate that uh, the history of this amazing vehicle, Put, it down, put a comment down below. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of them as I can, even though I'm on vacation again and going to Proline by the fire. Actually, I'm already there when this video is airing. So, <laughs> like I said, if you like this video and you like seeing exclusives and you wanna see more like this, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. Ha! <sighs> Okay, well, um, I've got my work cut out for me. Uh, a couple other things to note, these rings uh, on the uh, beadlocks here, these are beadlock wheels and tires. Uh, nice, supple, soft rubber on these uh, dirt buster tires. Uh, difference on the front, of course, more for traction in the rear. Uh, but these beadlock rings are white and I believe they are dyeable. So uh, I'll probably end up dyeing these to match whatever livery we end up going with. Um, can't say enough good things about this buggy though. It's pretty spectacular. Even just looking at the construction on the bottom here, you can, <laughs> here, I'll just, I'll just hold it up. You can really tell that, um, not much has changed on this one, but the quality is still there. And that's the most important thing. This kit really did go together very well. Um, and it's the size, I think that kind of slowed me down more than anything, because it is so big. It's unwieldy on this bench. It just... I think I need a bigger bench, honestly. Uh, and I have no idea where I'm gonna put this. There is literally no room for it. Um, but we'll figure something out. <laughs> we still need to add electronics to this, but um, that's coming soon. Uh, and uh, then we'll do some very fun running video with K-pop again. So I uh, hope you'll stick around for that. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for indulging me and spending all of the time on just one vehicle this week. Uh, it's so cool. And uh, I'm, I'm really chuffed. I'm really super, super excited about this one. That uh, is going to do it though. I'm back from vacation, back from Proline by the Fire on Sunday. Uh, so we'll be back to our regular scheduled stuff by then. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again next week.